Hey guys, my name is Scoby and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to play NES games on Android. This is going to be a nice, quick and easy tutorial. I'm going to be showing you step by step how to do everything. This was recommended to me by a viewer who made a similar video, but I'm just doing an updated one just to make sure it's all clear. Let's jump right into this. So the first thing we're going to need to do is open up our Play Store. And once our Play Store opens up, we're going to be clicking on the search bar on the top. And we're going to be searching for and installing RetroArch. Now RetroArch is going to be a free multi emulator that we're going to be using on Android. It's directly on the Play Store, so we don't have to mess around with any APKs. So that's the first thing we need to get installed onto our Android device. The second thing we're going to be doing is looking for and installing an application called Z Archiver. This is something you may or may not need depending on where you get your games from. But Z Archiver is going to be an extraction and file management software for Android that I'd recommend having on your device regardless. It's a really nice free tool and it's also on the Play Store. I'll be leaving links to both of these in the description down below. Once you have both of these installed, the first thing we'll be doing is opening up RetroArch for the first time. And if this is your first time trying to open this app, it will ask for access to your phone storage and you will have to allow it in this case because we're going to be searching for games a little bit later on. So once you have this done, the first thing we're going to be doing is clicking on the load core option at the very top. We're going to be loading and downloading some cores for our actual emulator. So when you first come here, you'll most likely have no cores installed. So we'll have two options here to download or install or restore a core. In this case, we're going to be clicking on the download a core option and we're going to be scrolling down here until we find Nintendo-NES cores. In this case, the very first one we'll do is the option. Most of these will work just fine. So if you want to test them out, you can feel free to do that. So all you need to do is click on the first Nintendo-NES core. Once you have this done, we're going to be brought back to the main menu. We're going to be clicking on load core and then we're going to be selecting the core that we just downloaded from the device. Once we have this done, you should see the name scrolling on the top left of the core you just set up. So at this point, I am going to mention that I'm not going to be showing you how to download games, but games are really easy to find. A quick Google search will help you out. There's no real restrictions on the type of games you'll need, but you will need games in the .NES format. And I'm going to be showing you how to open and load them directly right now. So this is where the archiver might come in handy. Depending on what format you get your games in, most likely they will be in a .zip. You will need to extract them out of the zip file for the archiver to be able to load them up. And that's what we can do directly in the archiver. In this case, you can see I have my NES games right here and I have Super Mario Bros right here as an example. You can see I have the .NES file above and the .zip file below. But to get your NES file, you may need to extract your zip. But extracting a zip with the archiver is really easy. All you need to do is click on your zip file, click extract here, and then your file will extract. You can also click extract dot 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 and then select the location to extract it to. In this case, I'm just going to be extracting it directly here. Once you have your games extracted, we're going to be coming back to RetroArch. We're going to be clicking on load content one more time. And now we're going to be locating to where our games are. So in this case, my games are in my NES folder. And you can see I have them right here. The file in the bottom with a box on it is actually the dot zip file. So this is not the file we're looking for. We're looking for the file above with the document icon that we're going to be using to actually play our game. Once you have all this loaded, once you click on your file, your game will start to load and then your NES game will load up. So if this is your first time playing this you will have the default control scheme and most likely this will be mapped by default as you can see everything here works just fine for me the game seems to work perfectly fine everything's at normal speed the sound and everything was good and if you are noticing any problems i'm going to be showing you a couple of settings we can look at in a second or i'd recommend checking is to download another rom and make sure everything's loading correctly otherwise you may need to download a rom for another service to make sure that everything is good with the rom itself so to actually go back to the settings, what you'll see is a little retro arc icon and a circle bubble. What we're going to be doing is clicking this and that will bring open the menu. From this point, we're going to be clicking on the close content option and that's going to be closing down the game. So we'll go back to the main menu itself and we're going to be looking at some options here. So the first thing we're doing is clicking the cogwheel on the bottom right of our menu and this is going to open up some extra options we'll have here for our device. So the first thing we have is the drivers. I'd recommend leaving most of the things here by default. After this, we then have some video options. You can come in here and mess around with some things, set up some scaling, synchronization. But for the most part, this should be fine. I'd only recommend coming in here if you're having some difficulties. You can experiment with the different settings to see what works best for you. And then the last thing and probably the most important thing is the input. This is where we're going to be able to map different controllers and different devices. You can easily come in here, set up the different input types into different slots, and you'll be able to set up different controllers and map them all directly inside RetroArch. Anyway, guys, it's that easy to play NES games on your Android device. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to drop a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out the other videos on the channel. I'm going to be leaving a link down below to my PayPal if you found these videos helpful and you want to support me. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, as always, keep it saucy. Peace.